Hello, this is Talon with Old Guy Stuff from Vizzy Quarter Lane. In this video, I'll show you an alternative method to graph a standard form equation without the need to convert to slope-intercept form. I'll show how I quickly determine the y-intercept, the x-intercept, and the slope. Why am I doing this video? Well, as a retired math teacher, I've never seen this approach in any math book. I've also never known another teacher to do it this way. But some students benefit from having an alternative approach that still uses sound mathematics. At the end of the video, I'll come back to this page and use my method to determine easy formulas to fill in the blanks. So I'm going to start with this equation, 2x plus 3y equals 12. Now to get the y-intercept, x has to equal 0. So if x is 0, then 2 times 0 is 0. So this part is going to be eliminated temporarily. Now, to get y as 1y and that coefficient to no longer be 3, we have to divide both sides by 3. Okay, so in essence, we're moving this 3 under here. So 12 over 3 is going to be the y-intercept. And that equals 4. I'm going to go ahead and mark that on my graph. To get the x-intercept, we pretty much do the same kind of thing. We imply that y equals 0. So 3 times 0 is 0, so this part will be temporarily gone. And that leaves 2x equals 12. Well, if I divide both sides by 2, then I'm going to have 1x equals 6. So in essence, what we're doing is we're moving this 2 under the 12. So 12 over 2 equals 6. I'm going to mark this on my graph. Now, how am I going to get slope out of this? Well, if I make my line and connect the two intercepts, I should be able to see slope. Now, an important thing to note is sometimes the graph grids cross on the graph the equation, the line. And in this case, it happens right here. So I could say I'm going down 4 and over 6, but I could also say I'm going down 2 and over 3. Since I'm going down 2, it's negative 2 over 3. Now, this is an important part of my method. When I see this 2 over 3, I'm thinking my x coefficient moves over the y coefficient. And we change the sign. That's all I'm going to be really looking at. So, let's look at another example. I have 3x plus 5y equals 30. So, the same kind of thing. If x equals 0, then this is temporarily gone. And if I divide both sides by 5, that means I'm basically moving a 5 under that 30. So, it's going to be 30 over 5. Which equals 6. So my y-intercept is going to be 6. For my x-intercept, I'm doing the same type of thing, only I'm going to make y 0. So 5 times 0 is 0. That's going to be temporarily taken out. So if I move my 3 under the 30, because I'm dividing by 3 on both sides of the equal sign, I'm going to have 30 over 3, which equals 10. So my x-intercept is 10. And now I can make my line from these two intercepts. Note, one important thing to remember is your line technically would go on forever in both directions. I'm only drawing it from my x and y axis. Okay, so from this part, I'm going to look to see if I'm crossing any of the grid lines, and I am. What this does is it gives me the reduced form of my fraction for slope. So I can go down 3, 
and over 5. And if you look at this, if I'm moving this value above that one and changing the sign, I'm having 3 over 5. And it's negative because it's going downward. So the way I think is move the A value, the coefficient in front of the X, over the B value and change the sign. That's all I'm thinking. Look at one more example here. Okay, now what happens if you can't get an intercept? So I'm going to do this kind of tricky. I'm not really going to be able to get my y-intercept good on this, but we're going to try. If x equals 0, then I'm basically moving this one over here. I'm going to have 8 over 3. Well, 8 over 3 is not going to give me a whole number. That equals 2 and 2 thirds. I'm going to get something close to here. But not exactly. Now I'm going to do the same kind of thing with the x-intercept though because I'm looking at the idea of graphing and if I can get the um, x-intercept as a whole number then I can graph this pretty easily even though I don't have a good y-intercept to go with. So if y equals 0 and I divide my x coefficient by 2 Basically, I'm moving that over there, so I'm going to have 8 over 2, which is 4. So now I've got that point, and it's good. If I take my slope concept then, and I'm moving my 2 over this, and changing the sign, I'm going to have a negative 2 over 3. Now, if I'm taking this negative 2 over 3, it's going to be going basically in this direction like this. It's going downward. But if I start at my 4, I can go up to this point. But if I go up to this 4 and I go to this point and I keep going like this, then I'm going to get... That right there, which is going to give me down 2 and over 3. So the way I figured this out without having to actually go into a slope-intercept form equation was to move my A value over to B value and change the sign. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get my slope intercept form of the equation based on these numbers. So here we go. In slope intercept form I have y and x. Now my slope is negative two-thirds and my y value was two and two-thirds and it's positive. And that's all I needed to do to get that equation. Now, why is this important? Well, some of the graphing calculators, you can graph standard form, like the TI Inspire. But some of them, like the TI-84 and TI-83, you have to have the slope-intercept form of the equation. Let's get a slope-intercept form out of this equation, then. I'm going to have y, and I've got my x. My y-intercept was 6, so I get that part. And my slope was negative 3 over 5. So I have my slope-intercept form of the equation. Let's look at this one. I've got my y, and I've got my x. My y-intercept was 4, and it's positive, so I'm going to put that. And my slope was negative 2 over 3. So let's go back to that first page then and make some formulas for this. To get my y-intercept, I basically moved the b value under the c as a numerator-denominator relationship. So that's going to be c over b. To get the x-intercept, I did that with the a value. I moved that under c to have the numerator denominator relationship, so I'm going to have c over a. 
And finally, to get my slope, I'll move the A over B and I change the sign. So let's put a quick equation up here and come up with slope intercept form, doing it rather quickly. So let me see. What if I had um, 4x plus 5y, and we're going to set it equals 20. Okay, so get my, my y-intercept. It's going to be 20 over 5, which equals 4. To get my x-intercept, it's going to be 20 over 4. which equals 5. I get my slopes, it's going to be 4 over 5, but change the sign. And that's it. Hopefully this alternative method will help people uh, that may be having a little bit of difficulty, or if you just want to see a quick way to get that slope intercept form without having to do all of that property of equality stuff where you're subtracting the AX from both sides and you're dividing both sides of the equal sign by B and all that. So you can visualize this and get answers really easily and then go in and while you're visualizing, you can make a graph mentally and on paper. This has been Talon with Old Guy Stuff on Busy Corner Lane. I hope this has helped people out. Have a safe, happy, peaceful, wonderful day and goodbye.